Boom, here we go. We are recording. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Rock Metal Podcast. I am your host, John Harris. Today on the Rock Metal Podcast, we have Samuli Federle, who has a new album called Nine Classics with Eight Strings. It's released on December 1st via Dr. John Surgery Records. And the cool thing is that this is the second time we've had Samuli on because a couple of years ago, we had a, a banger of an EP of instrumental guitar uh, on a new take uh, I found uh, with really cool stuff. And one of the, the tracks, because I'm into Kung Fu, was called Guitar Kung Fu. And I thought, well, that's cool. I like Kung Fu. I like guitars. He's brought them together. And this time around, some really brought together some classical tunes and not just on guitar like we've seen before in the past. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of that movie with Steve Vai and they're doing the Paganini song. Yeah, Crossroads. Yeah, Crossroads. Uh, whereas this is being done on eight string guitar. Uh, so very cool stuff. Samuli, so welcome back onto the show. Thank you, John. It's my pleasure. Pleasure to be here. So thank you for the invitation. You are quite welcome. Now, yeah. something that I thought was interesting, you said nine classics with eight strings. I was just kind of curious, why not like eight classics with eight strings or nine classics with nine strings or, you know, just 12 <laughs> classics with 12 strings? <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Well, actually, I've been playing eight string guitars for 10 years, so that's just a thing for me. But, um... <sighs> Well, I had like nine classical songs under my fingers, so I just wanted to record those. And of course, I was thinking that should I play with the numbers more, like having eight classics with eight strings. But um, it's not that a big deal. It's just I, I just uh, had those nine songs and uh, put them on one album. Uh, okay. So there's, and, and actually coming up with uh, some kind of title was a little bit tricky for me this time around. So it's just untitled, nothing more. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now you mentioned you've already got nine classical songs under under your fingers, yeah. and when I was on your YouTube page, I noticed that there over. It seems like over the years, these songs have popped up a few times uh, in various capacities, such as. Um, live with an actual orchestra mm -hmm. so yeah. i guess i guess take us through these particular nine songs what is it about these songs that uh bring you back to them is it something that you do for practice is it something that you do just because you love it the challenge of it take us through these nine songs yeah uh it's a good question um actually it's everything you just mentioned about i've been always fascinated with uh, classical music and um, especially the um um more melodical side with piano and uh, violin maybe i'm not that much into uh, classical with uh, you know the classical guitar style i'm more into the violin and the piano sound um and some of the songs i made for actually for my uh, live shows, I knew that people are going to know these songs like Conte Partiro and uh, then there's Finlandia, Humini, which is a big song here in Finland. It's almost like our national anthem, but not the official one. Mm -hmm. Anyway, everybody knows that. And uh, for my surprise, people reacted very positively every time I uh, played them on my shows and even asked for more. So that sparked <laughs> me to, to, okay, I need to have more repertoire with classical stuff. And then I did uh, Carmina Burana, which is kind of a more like scary song for me. It's used in horror movies many times. And I like the little darker vibe. And that's why I uh, made it to be more in uh, metal style. Okay. And yeah, and then some of the songs are more like the original ones, like uh, Vivaldi's Storm. I'm performing that with a uh, symphonic orchestra, so there's not kind of any, any arrangements going on with that song. But then again, Ponte Partido, that is more arranged into more like epic metal style, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, then there's one, one song... Uh, from Bach. 
it's originally made for cello. It's the uh, cello. cello suit. Yeah, cello suit number one in G major, I guess. So I made that into a solo guitar piece with a clean sound. So there's there's not anything much anything but, but guitar. Some mm-hmm. little piano and cello, but mainly guitar. So I try to be versatile with the arrangements too. So there's a metal style, then some original styles, then only guitar and uh, uh, basically that's it. And then I have a uh, I wanted to have three like super crazy songs, like "Flight of the Bumblebee." Uh, is, is one of those. Then I'm having like four epics, like Conte Partiro, and uh, two little bit slower ones, like Ave Maria, and uh, mm-hmm. and this uh, cello suit. Okay, it's, it's yeah. kind of funny you mentioned you know putting it into your live shows, and I imagine because at least here in Canada and a couple of times I've seen some uh, like shows in the States, like, you know, Satriani or Vi or, or whatever. Um, It seems like that that crowd kind of feeds on that very idea that you could pick up a guitar and take a violin piece and, and shred it with a distortion pedal. Yeah. Uh, You know, attached to it. Do you find that, that that's the same thing in, in Finland and in Europe that, that, the crowd is almost craving for you to, like you said, not necessarily bust out into classical guitar, but a classical piece that maybe was originally like a Chopin piece on the piano. That's very fast, very intricate. And here yeah. you are doing it on guitar. Yeah, it's exactly the same here. Also, uh, many times people from the audience come after the show to tell me that i uh, they have never heard or even thought about that you can do it like this to play with uh, play classical music with electric guitar, and for me that's obvious. Why not? Of course you can do it. <laughs> yeah. But I think they are same time they are surprised and uh, uh, and and uh, of course they uh, well. Also, you know, classical music is very like um, not main, mainstream music in here. But for my surprise, whenever I play, even though those people um, who come to thank me for playing those songs, I'm sure they they doesn't listen to classical music on their spare time. Right. But but there's something that uh, so, something with the classical music played with electric guitar that touches them, and uh, <laughs> I think it's it's probably more cool or easier to uh, access or you know whatever. Yeah. Exactly. Now, when it came to uh, so you mentioned something about you know doing eight string for a few years now, and I don't want to uh, bore everybody with well, why the eight string, um, but, mm-hmm. but I imagine where was the challenge in utilizing the eight string on these classical pieces, and maybe where was it really easy? Uh, like I, I imagine for the cello suite, using the eight string was probably pretty easy because it's a cello suite. Yeah, actually, it, it was easy for me. And um, well, basically, I, I did the cello suits a little different way. It's, it's kind of um, I arranged it to be like more chordal style playing, not like melo, melodical style. Right. But you'll hear it anyway. It's it, it's low, <laughs> it's low, uh, low uh, clean tone chords, and uh, I think it's very unique. Hopefully, mm-hmm. and. Um, one other thing, uh, as I mentioned, I always like to play and listen to classical piano pieces. And a piano has a lot more larger um, register than a normal guitar. It goes way lower and a little bit higher than normal six-string guitar. But with my eight-string guitar, it covers almost the same range as piano does. So it's very easy when, when you have... Uh, some kind of a piano, classical piano piece, uh, and, uh, and it's more than likely that the notes are going to go as low as the eight string register, if you know what I mean. So basically, I'm, I'm just playing the piano pieces as they are, and they fit into eight string guitar very naturally. Okay, so it was a no brainer then. I mean, obviously, yeah. if you've been playing eight string for ten years, yes. Yeah. 
you know, a bit easier, especially if you're familiar with these uh, with these pieces. Now, a c- couple of tracks you wanted to chat about today, I guess maybe out of focal point was Vivaldi's Storm and Conte Partido. And I'm mm-hmm. I'm curious uh, why these two tracks. And I know Vivaldi's Storm seems to be one that uh, you've been playing with for a while, as well as obviously Conte Partido. And then I saw mm-hmm. the, the video as well, live with the orchestra. Um, yeah. Why these two tracks? Um, well, I love them both. I, I love the whole Four Seasons uh, uh, thing, without the thing. This storm is only uh, kind of uh, the closing part of, of the summer theme. And I think the overall comp- composition is like 45 minutes or, or so. So the storm part is only like two minutes or, or three minutes. But still, it's a very powerful three minutes. And uh, I think it's the more, uh, most uh, famous part of that uh, whole uh, thing called Four Seasons. So I guess that's, that's the reason I picked that up, because people know that song. And I already noticed the response of the song while I, I used to play it live. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other thing is that it's originally um, an instrumental and it's written for violin and it uh, translates perfectly for guitar and it's one of those uh, three crazy songs I uh, mentioned about I mean, four epics, two ballads and three crazy ones so this is one of the crazy ones and it's very, very <laughs> tricky to master with guitar I uh, I needed to practice it for probably like, I don't know, for like half a year to have it uh, down that well that I can perform it like eyes closed and to really have it in, under my skin. Yeah, yeah. I I guess maybe as a, as another guitar player and hopefully the guitar uh, people who aren't guitar players don't get you know bored about learning about practice. But how do you, aside from just sitting down with a metronome? Uh, mm-hmm. How do you how do you practice that? How do you gain momentum on that? Because I, I imagine at certain points it felt like you were hitting a wall, yeah, and you couldn't go any faster than I don't know, you know, ninety beats per minute or whatever. Like how do you how do you blow past that and eventually get to a point where you're comfortable enough to hit record on that? Yeah, it's uh, another good question. Um, one thing when translating. Uh, pieces from other instruments to guitar is actually to figure out how to play it. I know where the notes are, but with guitar you can play a simple phrase like in a million ways. So I'm trying to figure out the most easier and the most logical way for me to play those parts. And usually that process takes the most most of my time to figure out. And then I might even play it for one month in a one-way which I think is the best way to do it. And then I figure out, hey, there's actually, I can do this part even better in an easier way. So searching for the uh, best way to do it is, is the key point for me. And then I'm just going piece by piece, like bar by bar or 10 seconds and 10 seconds. And uh, just trying to learn it to my muscle memory so that I don't have to think about it at all. And um, I think the speed comes pretty easily after that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it makes sense. Have, yeah. So if I'm having like bad fingering or bad technique for this part, it's uh, it's it's, it's going to be really tif- difficult to uh, speed it up. But when I'm having a perf- uh, best possible fingering and technique for the thing, it comes pretty easy. Yeah, yeah, because one of the things I was thinking is some of the ways that those guys were able to come across as playing so fast is they have a bow, and the bow yeah. allows for things to come across faster than with a guitar pick. So I think it's significantly more challenging than people think to translate yeah. some of this stuff to guitar. It is, it is, yeah. It, it's composed for violin, and some of the parts are really tricky for guitar. You know, it, they don't make sense. They don't sit well in the fretboard, and uh, your fingers get crossed and whatever. <laughs> so, so, yeah, because yeah. so the guitar it, fretboard's uh, upside down in comparison. Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But actually, I, I like the process when when 
or the thing that I am not playing the uh, normal, typical uh, guitar patterns, like pentatonic licks or whatever. I'm having totally new kind of uh, things that I would never come up come up with using a guitar. And it's even worse with when playing piano stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this violin is a string instrument, and then I'm having the other crazy song called Aquarium by Camille Saint Saens. Mm-hmm. That was a tough one to figure out how the hell I'm gonna play that with guitar. It took me like probably like one month even to figure out what is happening. Right, it's, it's very confusing. And then I was like, oh my god, it's impossible to play this song with guitar. <laughs> and then you did it so what was the moment what was the crux moment where you broke through uh, actually I used my uh, students as a uh, guinea pigs <laughs> I, 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 I I have few a uh, couple of students that, that are more capable like technique wise than the other ones so I took this song for them and then we were actually tackling it together and um, when I'm actually teaching the song for somebody else I'm I need to think it a little differently than I'm thinking about it when I'm just playing playing it by myself um, and actually that helped a lot to to uh, analyze the song with uh, with my students and um, then I was just trying to figure out again the best possible way to uh, play the phrases, and I needed to uh, slice it into uh, like one one bar phrases, the whole song, mm-hmm. and needed to analyze each bar separately. This bar is going to be using tapping and sweeping and some legato. Okay, and then then I have to use some <laughs> other technique in here, and it's it's a mess. Yeah, well, you, you mentioned you know going with some stuff with your students. Is that then? impact did did working on this record then impact your teaching do you teach differently now um uh, maybe uh, i i think so and uh, it, it gives me a perspective when or after teaching the super hard stuff and trying to uh, present it as simply as i as i can for the students uh, so after after these kind of things, kind of the normal stuff feels like super easy and clear, and uh, I think it makes my kind of my normal teaching more efficient. Or <laughs> <you know. laughs> yeah, one one question I kind of had. You mentioned you know uh, three crazy songs, one of them being "Flight of the Bumblebee," and you know I'm it. Trying to think of how to ask the question with kind of almost not sounding rude, but hasn't it been done before? Why, why flight of the bumblebee on guitar? Yeah, it has been it has been done before, and it has been done faster and and whatever. But um, I think um, I haven't heard any Finnish guy doing that before. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I might be the one of the first ones here. So. <laughs> There you go. I'm always reminded of the the one that John Petrucci did several years ago. Um, yeah, part of the mosquito. It's <laughs> yeah. He named it like that. It it sounds pretty much the same, but it's but it's his own. Right. So now this year has obviously been really quite interesting because of COVID, and you mentioned that uh, things have been a little bit different in Finland from perhaps uh, other places. But how has this year? Uh, gone for you and with regard to that like this this record's being released at the end of the year um, was it postponed for maybe an earlier release with plans to do uh like a like a tour on it how how is the year unfolded for you um uh, yes thank you it's 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 been uh i think it has been better than i was supposed or thought it would end up being um, of course, many gigs have been cancelled, but um, I found out that since I'm I'm mainly doing shows all by myself, I'm using backing tracks and there's there's my guitar. So we've um, actually right now we're we are having some venues open here. We can do shows, but we can do uh, basically the uh, capital area is being 
locked down, but rest of the Finland is more or less open. So uh, many many venues or bars they don't they want to have full bands, but since I, I'm playing by myself as a one man band, uh, they are checking me. So I've had pretty nice amount of shows here, um, and then uh, of course the lockdown gave us the new idea of having live stream shows. I think that's a global thing right now. And uh, even this week I'm having uh, two live stream shows. So it's going pretty nice. And um, having lots of Skype students as well because of, of the uh, COVID crisis is a good thing for me. <laughs> and um, with the record since some of the shows got cancelled, especially during the uh, springtime. That was the time when I was um, uh, recording most of the uh, album. I got the time to actually do it. And then there, the rest of the year went with the business side of things. I had a new record label and um, I, I thought that the December is a perfect month for the release just before the Christmas time. Mm-hmm. So. Grab that and put it under the digital tree, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, exactly. Nah. <laughs> now you mentioned a new record label. Maybe take us through that. Were you shopping around while recording this record? Uh, no, actually, that's a funny, funny story. It was some a fan of of mine. Um, I think he contacted me through some of my YouTube videos telling me that, hey, can I send you an email? I have something to uh, offer you. And uh, I was like, sure, go ahead. And uh, he wrote me a mail telling me that um, he, he is uh, uh, some, somebody who, who he knows owns a record label and uh, might be interested in me. So uh, I contacted the label, and it's a British label called Dr. John's Surgery Records. And um, <laughs> we agreed. That uh, that are gonna, they're interested in in, in my uh, music, and uh, we're very willing to release my stuff. Uh, actually, uh, we uh, immediately compiled a little uh, mini EP, um, older songs, which they released, and uh, then we uh, released one single, plus now this full album. And yeah. uh, then I was supposed to uh, do a little uh, festival show in, in England uh, that was arranged by the uh, company, but um, it got postponed until next March if if it's okay to uh, travel then. And uh, so it looks fine. Yeah, makes sense. And then a couple of things you mentioned there was live streaming, which you've been doing, and uh, some some students. And you'd mentioned, obviously, we chatted a little bit about being a teacher already. Um, so I guess you know the live stream was complicated for some bands, um, but because it's just you and some backing tracks, I guess it's pretty easy to set up a live stream. Yeah, uh, I think sound wise, it, it uh, works perfectly since my setup is. Um built so that um, I, I, I don't need any miking to capture my sound. I'm uh, connecting my uh, guitar sound straight into the PA system as well as my backing track. So uh, with the live streaming, I'm, I'm having the perfect sound for the audience. It's, 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 so that, that is the easy part. And uh, actually, I, I've had relatively big budget live stream shows here in Finland, like with nine cameras and uh, performing in a big studio and, and nice environment. So I, I was lucky to uh, have those chances, but uh, technically it's uh, very easy to uh, pull off my, my kind of live stream thing. Yeah, very uh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. And then students, I was just curious, uh, you know, during this time, are you able to attract more students because people want to be online or has it just been maintaining uh, your students? Um, both again, uh, from a surprise, people seem 
to uh, adapt in the, the Skype teaching thing pretty pretty well. So um, some of the guys that start to have lessons with me in the spring are still having those Skype lessons with me. And then I'm having some new new students, a couple of students every month or just today I got one one request of having a few lessons and uh, some guys want to have two lessons and some guys want to have one a year or whatever. So both ways are fine with me. Okay. So they, they see a YouTube video and they see you doing the storm and they're like, hey, I want to learn that. And then they hit you up. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, yeah. And um, then I'm advertising that a little bit in my social media. And uh, even on my web page, it says that you can book me a Skype lesson. Um, and yeah, I, usually I don't ask where people find me, but uh, I think I should. It would be interesting to know. Yeah, nowhere to, nowhere to put your energy into. Yeah. And there is that. Yeah, I'm on your website right now. So if you are listening in, still watching, still as samulifederle.com. And if you go to today's show notes at www.therockmetalpodcast.ca, I'll have all the links there. I'll also have a couple of videos uh, to be able to uh, watch from today's content. Otherwise, Samuli, we've chatted about Vivaldi's Storm, Conte Partido. We've chatted about the nine classics. We've chatted about the eight strings. We yeah. chatted about Dr. John's surgery records. We chatted about COVID-19. Um, the only thing we didn't chat about was, I don't know, Finnish meatballs and Finnish cinnamon buns. Uh, yeah, they are good ones. Yeah, I you just try them out. I should. I just found out that the cinnamon buns actually mean slapped ears. Uh, yeah, it does. It does. It's it's a way to punish little kids. <laughs> <laughs> With cinnamon buns. That's my favorite yeah. punishment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, ah, yeah. I have, <laughs> I've had those a few times. Okay. Beautiful. All right. Uh, is there anything that I did not mention, uh, similarly, that you wanted to chat about? I think you, we've covered a lot of topics here, so I'm, I'm pretty fine here. And uh, I hope to see everybody on tour. Um, I was supposed to uh, do some Korean tour this year and uh, England or whatever, but um, let's just cross fingers and hope that next year will uh, be easier for us and uh, the tour would happen again. Mm -hmm. All right, beautiful. Yeah.